Hey yo, my tabletop sports friends. This is Bob Hansen coming to you from the Sports Spiel Plots with a special video today. I've been getting a lot of requests for a follow-up video of my card design video I did a while back. So here it is today. I'm going to go through the process of how I designed my Hockey Blast cards for the 2018-19 Great Lakes Hockey Association. Uh, it uses the players from the World Hockey League fictional cards that are sold by Play Games. So to start out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you some history of what my cards originally looked like. So I've gone through three iterations. This is my fourth iteration of cards, and I haven't been happy with any of them, to be honest. Although the first two iterations were from the first time I ran this league. Uh, when I ran this league originally, I was trying to play out all of the games of a hockey season, uh, basically playing a half se half schedule. Uh, the teams that I were playing was playing with, none of them were balanced at all. So I ended up having a lot of issues with uh, being a lot of blowouts or uh, teams being unbeatable or teams not being able to win games. And it came down to me not really understanding how... Uh, these teams were scored and drafted and things like that. And I looked at the how-to guide, got a better idea as to how these hockey cards um, should work together. And so I drafted up another league, created some cards for it, and did a couple of test games with it. I'm not really happy with it, them because of some issues which we'll go through in just a second. But bottom line here is uh, we're going to create some new cards. We're going to do a a few videos on this uh, going through the entire process of designing uh, these cards and um, the reason I'm doing this I want to get this done by October because I want to be able to start playing my hockey league in October uh, I want to play every game uh, for one of the teams in that league the Duluth Yeti and uh, so I will play a full hockey schedule for them it's actually going to come out to 84 games. That's the way the schedule works out for a 12-team league and the configuration of how, how many games I wanted that team to play other teams. So it's not going to be an 82-game season, which is normal, or sometimes 81 or 80. Uh, it'll be 84 games, so it'll be two games over a normal like NHL schedule. But anyways, bottom line, so the first iteration of cards that I did for this series look like this. So this is one of the cards that I did. And it looks pretty much like the standard cards that you'd see uh, from play games. Uh, the only difference, and I'll bring this up a little bit closer for you, uh, the dark color uh, and not much else. Uh, they're almost the same size as a regular card. I think they're a little bit smaller. And that's just because of the way when I print my cards, I print them with a margin around the outside. And so that cuts the size of the cards down a little bit uh, both in both dimensions. Uh, and so... But the uh, nice thing is that they actually fit in really nicely into the boxes on this mat that I bought uh, for the game. So, you know, we got you know, a couple centers here. You can see how they fit in really nicely into there. Um, but anybody that's seen some of my, my creations knows that I like a little bit of pop in my cards. So I came up with version 2 of this during this first season that I was doing. Like I said, I got about uh, 12 games, I think, into this for every single team in the league. 12-team 12, 12 league. So I did play quite a few games with it, <clears throat> and so I did create some extra cards for this. Now this is the second design. This design is a really, I think it's a really good design. You can see it here. Um, nice, nice, uh, um, design where I decided to kind of break out of the horizontal lines and stuff and try some some diagonals and putting things at an angle and as you can see this uh, I got a lot of compliments on this card and the other thing that's really nice is well they fit really nicely um, and uh, you can see same kind of thing here they fit really good the size is about the same as the other cards Here's the one problem with this set, and this is this is a really sharp set. Uh, I love how the cards turned out um, as far as the colors on this one, especially for Flint, compared to what they were on that last card that we had. Um, you know, between that, oops, 
between these two cards here uh, quite a bit of difference in pop there right okay um and the blue i just love that blue it, it turned out so good on these cards but here's the problem with this so as you can see uh and i'm trying to look for a card yep here's a great example of this so here's a card you'll notice that on a normal card that the um the top and the bottom part where it's blue goes all the way to the edges okay all the way edges on both sides um and this is actually something that someone else brought up to me they're like you know uh if if someone else wanted to actually make these and cut them out they're gonna have a problem with this because of the fact that this could happen so if you look on the edge of this one here just up in the top of the edge right there you can see where you're seeing the blue from the next card over on the edge and so this one didn't get cut just right and unfortunately i got part of the next card on there and it doesn't look very good okay so this was a failure in this design i did play with this design till i got tired of that iteration of what i was doing and realized you know i don't want to play 300 plus games of hockey blast i want to play 82 games play some playoffs and be done with the season so that brought on the next iteration so I had created everything and it was really awesome and um, went through a draft process did a little bit of corrections here and there so I actually changed some of the player cards to have more stars or whatever um, and I created a new set of cards so these cards the other cards I created now I got went off with the diagonal again. I'm like, yeah, well, I got to go off the diagonal again because these are such big cards and they're so short. Here, here's the thing with this card. If you look at it, I tried to fit because I wanted to try to print four in a four rows of cards instead of three because these cards here and the other cards printed three rows of them. Uh, and I got 24 cards on there. I wanted to still get 24 cards on there, but do something wider like this. So I had to do four rows of six. So I got a wider card, but then I got a, a shorter card too. So you can see here that there's some difference there in between these two cards. Um, here we go. As far as the height is concerned. Okay. So I had to squish things a little bit more. Uh, it didn't look too good. And so... Um, the other thing I added on this one, which I really liked, is the images in the background here for this. And I actually added this the first iteration, but I did this by position this time. So, like, the centers have a different image than the wings. And the wings have a different image than the defense guys. It's like these defense guys have a whole different image here. They all have different images. The goalies have different images, too. Um, so this was a great design, I, you know, um, cause I like the wide cards that Keith did for the soccer blast for the world cup series. Those are awesome cards, but here's the problem on my tabletop here. I'm going to put a couple wings in here and you can quickly see that fitting everything in is a problem. Okay. So here are the design goals for the next iteration of this. I want something that's going to be playable. I want something that's going to be wider than this, but can fit in here. I want something that's about as tall as this. And I want something that brings back this design element with the diagonals. Okay. So those are the three things we want. We want to bring, we want to, first of all, keep the card somewhat wide but thinner so that they fit on the on the board. We want to keep it about as tall as this, if possible, and we want to uh, go back to this design paradigm. If we can do all those things, I think I'd be really happy with the card. So here's what we're going to do. The next video I create, this is the first video of the series, the next video I create I am going to do, uh, I'm going to start the process of creating one of these cards. I'll go from the beginning and I'll be using a tool called Microsoft Visio. And this is something I used in the previous video. 
And I don't want that to scare you away because you say, well, I don't have Microsoft Visio, I can't do that, right? There are a lot of design tools out there you can use. Uh, I, actually, somebody brought up in a comment section on one of the, on my video that said, hey, um, I have a publisher, maybe I could use publisher. And they looked at it and I, and I actually opened up publisher. I was like, okay, can I make a card set in publisher? And I, and I looked at it and one of the cool things about publisher is it actually has a way that you can create guides for and divide everything into nice neat little columns and rows and everything which is basically going to be the size of your cards and uh so i started playing with it and i didn't get too far into it uh there were some basically some hurdles there that i saw um that i'd have to overcome and it's basically just a learning process in the end but I'm really happy with the tool I use right now, but I think you could use Publisher to create these car these kind of cards. Uh, you could theoretically use a tool like Excel using shapes and drawing and stuff in within Excel. So if you have Excel, you could probably use that. Better yet, if you know anything about using um, some kind of an Illustrator type program, if you have Illustrator or the free version of Illustrator, uh, it's not really Illustrator, but it's a free version, free piece of software that's like Illustrator called Inkscape. Uh, that would also work. I've actually tried creating cards in Inkscape. There's a couple of things in Ink that Inkscape can't do that I do. Otherwise, it's a great program and I think it would work well for making cards. Um, one of the hang-ups I had with it is it doesn't do um, small caps um, for fonts, which I love using font, uh, small caps in my uh, cards. You can see right here, you know, this this uses small caps. If you look at Chris in there, um, you can see I use small caps in there. On this one, and Anders, again, I use small caps. Here's another thing on this. I had to scrunch everything so much on this one that the fonts get kind of small. That's another design goal. We want to make sure that the, the cards are readable again. So a few things there. All right, so I'm going to wrap this video up. This is a really quick video. I just kind of want to go over, kind of go over what the design philosophy is and what's going to happen and what I'm going to do. So that when we dive into this process uh, in the next video, you have a kind of an idea of what's going to happen. Now let me just go over real quick my kind of design flow and how I do this. And this is why this is going to be important. Whatever software you're going to use, if you look at the concepts of what I do, you can design your own cards with any kind of software that you can, that you can make work. Don't worry about what I'm doing as far as the technical part of things, worry about my process and see what I do as my process because that's really where you can learn to do this on your own because you can fill in the blanks using any other piece of software out there. It's just how you put this together. So the steps I go through, first of all, I figure out my card size and the card size, um, I actually showed this in the, my first video, my initial video, where I talked about how... Um, you know, I did some basic setup and, and stuff like that. So I find out a card size, all right? Uh, basically, I'm looking at how many how many rows and how many columns do I want, and then figure out the size, and then make, make sure it all fits, and then, bam, off to the races, start making the cards. Then I'll take that card size I have, I'll take one of those, and I'll start making my template. Um, that's going to be the one that all the other cards are going to be based off of. It's going to include all of the information that you'd find on a card. So, like, if you look at this uh, Chris Dennis card, Chris Dennis has almost every stat on it. So, Chris Dennis is a perfect card that you would have for something that would be look, that would look like a template card because it has um, shot stars, has assist stars. Um, we would, you know, jam it in with as many stars as we can to make sure everything fits. Uh, we'd have the speed, skill, um, and whatever one's below that. I, oh, I can't remember now. It is oh, power. Power and then hit, smart, star. I'd have all those values there. I'd have a full set of symbols in the middle, just so, just like this card does. That would be my template card. Based off of that, then I'd create separate cards for the different positions. Because for this one, I want to have a separate image uh, and separate layout, kind of, for centers, wings, defensemen, and goalies. Okay? Simple as that. So I would make cards for uh, template cards for each position. Once I've done that, then I would take those and I would start coloring them for each team. And I'll talk about that process. That'll probably be the next video. So that'll be the third video coming up. We'll go through those first steps in the, the second video. Third video, we'll talk about how I get the team's colors and stuff. Start, you know, flushing out what the teams are and how they're colored, the color schemes that are used on those cards. And then 
I'll talk about actually creating a team with those templates. Once you have those templates in there, then you're going to go in, you're going to start uh, creating um, the actual team pages and, uh, you know, making everything work. So that's it. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up right now. We'll go on to the next video. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, make sure you hit the bell if you want notifications when other videos come out. The next video, I'm actually going to be recording right after this. So this video should be being released uh, right before it. And then the next video should come out right away. There might be another a little bit of wait for the next video. Or I may release all of these at once. I don't know how that's going to work. But we'll see what I can do here and how much time I have. But my goal is to try to get this out as quickly as possible. Because... I need these cards myself for what I'm working on. So uh, I want to make that October date, get this to the printer and everything. Oh, yeah, before I go, actually, one more thing, too, before we go. This is kind of what one of these printed out sheets looks like. This is uh, from the Rockford Pioneers from this set right here. Okay, this is what a printed out sheet looks like. So this is uh, printed out. I printed out at uh, Office Depot. They print them out for me. Uh, Lately, for some reason, Office Depot has gotten really dark with their cards. So you can see how dark these cards are compared to like this. I love this color. By the way, I wish I could replicate that color again. But um, for some reason, they're printing everything really dark. But I get one of these. I take a cutter to it, and then I cut everything up. And I'll show you the cutter. Actually, hang on a second. Excuse the squeaky chair. This is the cutter I use right here to cut up my cards. It's a slider, cut, sliding cutter. You just put this in here, line everything up, and then there you go. That's it. It's got a guide in there and everything. Most of the time it's pretty accurate. Sometimes, as you saw in that uh, that one card there, screw up a little bit. So that's why we're going to have to have a little bit of leeway in our cards we design next. So that's it for this now, for real, and I'm going to move on to the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.